Our next speaker is Becca Lakin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us this evening. I'm going to be sharing a story, a personal story, um, essentially about hope and resilience and recovery. This is the slide that I have chosen. It is a phrase you may have heard definitely um, politically. <laughs> However, I have chosen to use this slide as an example of what mental illness and depression can do to one's psyche as well. Um, and this is how. Um, I was 13 years old and living in Maryland when I first realized something wasn't quite right. For years, I'm sorry, for weeks, for weeks I kept waking up from recurring nightmares, began to self-harm and hid it from my family until one night my younger sister woke up and unknowingly saw and found me self-harming removing my toenails one at a time. I was horrified that I scared her and I did not even understand or know why I was doing it myself. I eventually confided in one of my teachers and shared the nightmares and memories that were in fact of a rape and molestation that had taken place seven years prior when my family lived in Puerto Rico. Um, I remember feeling angry and upset at this teacher and the school system because I did not know at the time that when you report things like that, they have to tell mom and dad. And I did not want mom and dad to know because I was afraid of getting in serious trouble. I was afraid that my father, in particularly, would be very upset that I had perhaps done something wrong and um, would be in trouble for not having told them sooner or in, and just letting it happen at all. Following the meeting, I began to become slowly, increasingly depressed and also began having more memories of why I was afraid of my father. When he was angry, he was very angry and could not control his temper. It came out in physical ways and on occasion ways where he would jump out of hiding and, and beat me. And I know my sisters also incurred some of the same things. That was part of the beginning of my post-traumatic stress. I had been in therapy since the age of eight, though I never understood why, and I hated it. At 14, I was prescribed my first antidepressant. However, it f made me suicidal and closed me off to the idea of pursuing medication for quite some many years more. My first hospitalization at age 16 would be the first one of over 18 admissions for hospital suicide attempts, major depression, trauma treatment for complex PTSD, and other issues. At 17, I ran away, that's what I called it, to go to college at Arizona State University, where I did graduate, thankfully, but it was extremely difficult, struggling with depression, fear of men, of other issues that impacted my academics. Following graduation, I felt lost. I wasn't doing a major that I wanted to pursue. It was something that I felt I had been told I should do by my father. And after graduation, I was just looking around to see what I would want to do for my life. And work in the field of mental health, which was what my passion always was geared toward. My closest relatives were living in California at the time because my family primarily lived on the East Coast. And my family, my nuclear family, are not very close, sadly, 
but they are supportive as much as they can be. I began choosing to I began to choose my friends that would eventually replace temporarily and become my new family being in Arizona for so many years. I would later realize, however, I was involved in toxic relationships and in that time became involved and used methamphetamine for over two years. I felt like my life was closing in and I was at an all-time low, depressed at the time, suicide attempts, fainting, confusion, shame, drugs, disappointment and disapproval of myself, work issues, and many other things. One February day, I realized, looking in the mirror, if I was going to get to be the person that I knew I could be, and more importantly, the person that I wanted to be, I had to change. That was scary. On February, in February 2002, when I looked in that mirror, I saw the woman that I did not want to see, and two weeks later, followed through on my commitment to myself and for myself on a promise to stop using methamphetamine. I did, cold turkey, admit and have not used since. Admittedly, it was difficult at first. I moved, disconnected, and terminated relationships with those who were toxic in my life, and began sinking the mental health and psychiatric treatment I so desperately needed. Shortly after beginning my recovery journey, the location in Arizona where I was receiving treatment encouraged me to participate in a then new group they were offering called RAP by Mary Ellen Copeland, Wellness Recovery Action Plan. The group was about teaching individuals self-empowerment through five key concepts of hope, personal responsibility, education, self-advocacy, and support, and learning to know oneself through creating toolboxes of things a person can do so that they can self-soothe or get to know their triggers and really just sort of be more introspective and have a little bit more control over some of their emotions if that's a depressive episode they might be experiencing, all the way up to including, you know, creating a crisis plan and having family and friends involved as part of that. RAP not only saved my life, but reignited my passion to work in the field of mental health, which I have currently been employed with for the past 12 years. I did the group many times and have continued to incorporate it into my daily life. For several years, I was able to practice and implement many RAP skills to become stronger, understand, and ultimately have a better awareness of myself and my illness, eventually even becoming an advanced level RAP facilitator. However, if it was not for RAP, eliminating toxic people from my life, developing new healthy relationships, a strong support network, and ultimately believing in myself, I know I would not be here today to tell this story. Mental illness is a disease. It is a chronic health condition, often resulting from chemical changes or imbalances in one's brain. Mental illness affects many, many people. Some you may already know, myself for instance. I'll be honest. Mental illness can be very scary, especially at first, and especially for everyone who is going through it with that person who is experiencing it. Mental illness can at times be incredibly debilitating, and the cognitive distortions that you see here of the alternative facts, the depression will tell you that that, that butterfly, or that bird up there, <laughs> sorry, you know, is a cat and depression may make you feel like it's the end of the world and nothing is as it seems and it's just a horrible place to exist. Yet often, 
with medication and or therapy, mental illness can be absolutely, can be, I'm sorry, yet often it can be managed with, me, with medications and therapy. Mental illness can be absolutely infuriating and frustrating to deal with for a variety of reasons. We can each win the fight against mental illness and stigma together through education, awareness by audiences like yourselves, and simply seeing a person with a mental illness as a fellow human being. We are your neighbors, we are your children, your family, your friends, your friends' friends, your children's friends, your coworkers, and so many more. But what we are not is our diagnoses. Those who live and survive with mental illness are resilient to the core and endure things only those who have similar experiences can fully understand and appreciate. We persevere through public adversity and personal challenges. We are strong. We are intelligent. We are professionals, lawyers, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, and able-bodied, able-minded, feeling people. Recovery is possible. It is not easy, and it is a journey. For those who suffer or know someone who does, it takes courage, faith, believing it is possible, and believing in oneself. Recovery begins with hope, grows with and through resilience, and becomes stronger through perseverance. Such as with life, recovery is a journey, a roller coaster, different for everyone, and sometimes even something that, in hindsight, one might even have gratitude for as it often shapes the person who they become today. My name is Becca, and this is my brave.